Hey, Nisbo here. So this is another unboxing. Um, I ended up picking up this motherboard when I was uh, at the Micro Center over in Chicago, uh, Westmont. And they happen to have uh, this there. Uh, oddly, uh, they, I think they were trying to maybe clear these out or something. So uh, obviously the, the 690 boards came out. So um, I ended up getting this uh, for a pretty good deal. Uh, definitely not, not full retail. But what I thought was that this board is probably one of the more unique, neat looking boards out there. Um, and I'll probably show you here why. I know that the, uh, the 590s were not very popular. Uh, it's because they were kind of in the middle of the, the 10 core. Uh, the 10 core, uh, 10th gen, um, the, the, the chips, ooh, that's pretty fancy. The chips were uh, uh, then reduced down to eight cores, but you had PCIe 4 um, compatibility, which is actually, uh, it improves a lot of speed and uh, performance. Probably more than the core cores do. Oh, that's pretty neat. So, has this little, uh, it's almost like it's a, uh, maybe like an boutique product or something here. Let's take these things apart. Let's see here. Like that, just that accessory kit. And another board. Wedge in there pretty, pretty good. Let me get this out. Just like all the other dark motherboards, there is this uh, kind of a reference board, which I found to be pretty useful. It has uh, standoffs that you can use, so that's pretty neat. It gives you all the layout, uh, telling you what's on the motherboard. Shot of that. Then, put this way to the motherboard. About this motherboard, Let's see here, lift it up. Yeah, back of the board has this huge dark across the PCB. Um, I believe, like the 690, though, I have a big full metal plate on the back. Um, so, this is the motherboard 590. Now, what's neat about this is I think all the copper. Um, I've never seen a motherboard with so 
so much elaborate uh, uh, heat pipes uh, to kind of draw away all the the, uh, the 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 heat away from looks like the chipset here, um, and then you have all the uh, it looks like maybe there might be MOSFETs and other types of things for power management across here as well. That these heat sinks are probably drawing away um, all of the the, the heat. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, so again, this motherboard has, um, it's, it's for the uh, 11th gen, but um, it is compatible with 10th gen. So I think I'm gonna maybe start using it with my uh, 10900K, um, do a little bit of overclocking, and then switch over to the 11th gen at some point, because the 11th gen uh, has the ability to use um, DD, let's see here, faster DDR, DDR4 uh, memory that goes up to uh, 5333 megahertz, um, which is pretty neat about this if, if you get the 11th gen chip. And then you, you have, um, let's see, what else here? The other neat thing that the, um, the I guess the difference between Maybe I can show you the difference. Let me bring the other board. So this is the Z490. Uh, one of the problems with the 490 was if you had like an SLI, um, you had to actually use some sort of riser cables to kind of separate things out. The uh, 590, the spacing is actually good, where you could put two uh, 3090 cards and then be able to SLI them. Um, not probably something that not everyone does, but the sense would be if you use this, uh, you could probably put those cards in place and then be able to put in the, uh, the pots and then be able to do the, the LN2 a little bit easier. So the spacing is, is good, uh, where um, if you have the little SLI dongle, um, the spacing is perfect for four slots uh, instead of three. So um, here's the SLI dongle. You can kind of see that it's made more for, for that. It does not fit this. So that's kind of the one of the reasons why um, this board, I think, is, is pretty nifty. Um, one more thing is that... Um, it has um, um, kind of all the functionality that the Z490 has. Um, has all of the kind of the, the rotated socket, the, the um, um, right angled connectors here for the power, making it easier to kind of connect all the power and just push it all to the side. Um, here's, here's kind of my power supply over here. Um, Let's see what else. Um, oh, yeah. So these, I think, were PCIe three um, on the Z four hundred and ninety. These are actually PCIe uh, four, so you should be able to run a little bit faster. Now, granted, uh, you're going from sixteen when you use two, you go to uh, eight and eight. Uh, same type of thing probably happens over here where you go eight and eight. Um, the, there's more power phases here as well. So this supposedly has 21, uh, uh, 21 phase digital VRM. I believe this one had like 18 or 19, uh, maybe 19. Um, and then you have uh, kind of these convenience switches and this uh, uh, kind of the reboot buttons. Um, this this one. This button here is, it looks like it's unchanged. Um, there's a, a button here that does this kind of um, safe reboot um, where, where if uh, you're overclocking and maybe like memory is not, not booting up, you can hit this button right here underneath this, uh, this USB. Um, this, this is a bootable USB, so that way you can um, flash the BIOS uh, without having to actually um, kind of have a, a CPU or a lot of things running um, or installing like an operating system.
Let's see here. And the other thing that was nifty in the 490 was kind of this disable switch. Uh, let me see if I can get a better angle here on this one. But there is this switch here where you can disable various uh, PCIe lanes. Um, so depending on what you switch it to, you can uh, only run one or the other one or maybe none of them. Um, I, I really don't know what all the switches were for. Um, but for this one, uh, it was useful where if I had two cards, I could disable just one of the cards and then um, run non-SLI. Um, so it had some sort of benefits there, where if I wanted to just run one card um, and then do some benchmarking, I could do that. Um, the the other big difference here too is that since the if you if you use an 11 uh, 11th gen chip, it has the um, uh, M.2 that supports PCIe 4, so speeds are roughly around 7,000. Um, versus here where the speeds I think are around uh, 3200 or 3000 3, or so um, um, transfer speeds. So this is definitely two times the speed, um, or at least the NVMe will be two times the speed of, of uh, I guess, its predecessor here. Um, and then I, I think both of these, the nice feature too is just having that Wi-Fi. So uh, don't necessarily need to connect to anything. I can just use the Wi-Fi directly. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? I think that's about it. Um, one more, I guess, cool feature is down at the bottom of the board. Let me see if I can show you here. Bottom of this board, there is this six pin connector that's right down here. And that's like a supplement extra power uh, that, that you can use to run and power the PCIe lanes. Um, so for example, I think that if I were to use like this, this card right here, since it doesn't have any sort of power attaching directly to it, um, it I can get some extra power going to it from, from this slot here. Obviously this probably doesn't need that much. I think it just uses about 30 watts. But if you had a more of a beefy card and you wanted to make sure that uh, um, power was not being drawn from the CPU or from the motherboard in any sort of fashion, you can uh, power the PCI and give extra power to kind of run into the, the uh, PCIe slots over here. Um, so, that, and I think those extra power might actually help with the uh, M.2 as well. So I think anything related to the PCIe's um, that, that, that are powered over here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's about it. So that's that's my unboxing for that. Um, well, I guess maybe I should take a look at some of this other stuff here too. Let me take a quick look. Also not draw out this video too long. So kind of put that aside a little bit and kind of see what the box of goodies has here. And I can just dump it out and take a quick look. Uh, looks like a bunch of uh, M.2 screws, I believe, just there. Um, oh, so that's kind of neat. So one of the things that um, the 490 had was the USB drive, a thumb drive to use. It looks like they give you one of these as well um, for the 4, 590 here. So use that uh, case badge. I get a lot of these around also, so that's kind of neat. Um, let me see here. So I believe this is, yeah, so this is just the wireless antenna looks like it's a big E hmm. yeah I think that's magnetic also yeah it is that's also magnetic um, so it's eh, kind of neat nice useful 
if you look at like the uh, ASUS boards or the um, the um, Gigabyte boards, they give you uh, kind of this external antenna as well. Um, I, I guess one of the nice things about this kind of a setup is the cables are used to connect to the motherboard. Um, the the putting the I guess the old antennas, um, which let me kind of show you what one of those look like. The old antennas just kind of stuck to the side. Um, and I did have actually a mishap because of that, because I was trying to move the motherboard and then um, this actually ended up getting caught. Uh, I should always make sure to remove these before I move the motherboard around. Um, so then I ended up kind of um, taking something on the side over here and it, it was bending a little bit. So I had to kind of bend things back. Um, but it was not a big deal. I just got to be careful. So I think the wire kind of helps alleviate that. It looks like you got some SATA cables here. Um, so I don't know if I can see there. Uh, these are the standoffs, which I think I will use with the, um, with the other board. So I'll kind of bring that back over here. Give myself something to do. And it looks like these are the standoff screws. Um, this looks like it's the... Uh, looks like this is the probit. Connector. So it's uh, one of these features that the uh, motherboard provides you is you can actually connect this directly into the motherboard and then you can use um, kind of the, the probe um, probes to kind of uh, read the, uh, the the current. So yeah, I don't know what this is. Oh, looks like they give you two of them. Okay, so there's two of these probe cables. So you can use a multimeter um, and then use that multimeter to kind of read the, the values, electrical values. And, oh, so these are uh, various thermal thermal pads um, that they provide you. So one of the things that um, the other motherboard provided you was also, these little square thermal pads that go underneath the uh, uh, M.2, the, the NVMe drive. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to kind of um, draw the, the, the heat away um, from, from the controller, the, the M.2 controller. And then that, um, the, I guess the size of this is actually pretty good where it doesn't cover the... the uh, the actual memory modules themselves, it just covers the controller. So then the controller um, will kind of soak the, the heat away down into um, down into the heat sinks or down into the motherboard and then it'll kind of dissipate that heat. Let's see, so I think that's it. Yeah, so here it is, Z590. Um, I'm going to take this right now. Uh, I'm probably gonna put this in there um, I just open this uh, and then I will put my LN2 pot, uh, probably take the 10900 that I had on the, the other motherboard and then do a little bit of, of LN2 on this, uh, try to use up what I have. Uh, there you go. Thanks. Peace out.